The second child of Thomas and Nancy Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809 in a one-room log cabin. In Abraham's youth the family moved frequently, trying to stay one step ahead of financial trouble and illness, before eventually settling down in Coles County, Illinois. Along the way, Lincoln became known for his physical strength as well as his formidable self-education. At the age of 21, he left home and canoed to New Salem, Illinois, where he signed on to a local riverboat firm. After a short stint on the Western Rivers, a shorter stint as manager of a general store, and service as a militia captain during the Black Hawk Wars, he made his first run for a seat on the Illinois General Assembly, which he lost. In 1834, he won his second General Assembly election and served four terms as a member of the Whig Party while taking up the practice of law in Springfield. In 1842, after a two-year engagement marked by one cancelled wedding, Lincoln married a 23-year-old woman named Mary Todd. Abraham Lincoln is one of the four presidents who appear on Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore National Memorial is a massive sculpture carved into Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills region of South Dakota. The other three former presidents carved into Mount Rushmore are George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Theodore Roosevelt. His first election loss occurred in 1832 when he lost the election for the Illinois General Assembly. In the following years, he lost one race for U.S. Congress, two races for U.S. Senate and one campaign for the nomination for a vice president. But all these losses seemed unimportant when he was finally elected the 16th President of the United States of America in November 1860. Abraham was very skilled at using an axe. Tall for his age, Lincoln was strong and athletic. He was also an accomplished wrestler as a young man and was defeated only once out of the approximately 300 matches he took part in. The champion speaker and powerful writer had a weakness in spelling. The word, inaugural, was a problem. Crowell said in her blog post that Lincoln wrote, inaugural, in a note to his secretary, John Hay, on his handwritten copy of his second inaugural address. It's sort of amusing and endearing that despite being the president and giving inaugural addresses, he routinely misspelled, inaugural, Crowell said. Images of Lincoln often show him wearing a tall black hat. The hat was more than a fashion statement. Lincoln's law partner William H. Herndon described another function, this hat of Lincoln's a silk plug was an extraordinary receptacle. It was his desk and his memorandum book. Whenever in his reading or researches he wished to preserve an idea, he jotted it down on an envelope or stray piece of paper and placed it inside the lining. Afterwards when the memorandum was needed there was only one place to look for it. One such hat of Lincoln's is on display at the National Museum of American History. Lincoln was invited to the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. But the star was to be Edward Everett. Everett was one of the best known and most regarded orators of the day, and he was the star attraction at the Gettysburg Cemetery dedication, Crowell said. Abraham Lincoln was invited, to make, a few appropriate remarks. Everett spoke for about two hours, and Lincoln about two minutes. Now, of course, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address is famous, and far fewer people remember Edward Everett and his oration, she said. Growing up on farms in Kentucky and Indiana, Lincoln had little time for school. He often borrowed books and studied on his own. In the 1820s Lincoln assembled his own notebook to work on mathematical problems, known at the time as a sum book or cipher book, Crowell said. You can see a page of the sum book at wapo.st slash mathbook. On the night of his assassination, General Ulysses S. Grant had been invited to attend the play with Lincoln but declined because his wife did not like Mary Lincoln. Sons Willie and Tad Lincoln lived in the White House and were known for being rowdy. Crowell said that Herndon, Lincoln's law partner, wasn't thrilled with their father's reaction. His children did much as they pleased. Many of their antics he approved, and he restrained them in nothing. 
Dot, dot, dot. He was the most indulgent parent I have ever known, Herndon wrote. Julia Taft Bain, whose brothers played with Tad and Willie, wrote in Tad Lincoln's father that the president enjoyed the little distractions from the war. When the boys barged into his office to ask for a pardon for a doll accused of spying, Lincoln played along, and I only wish, hey, he said to his secretary, with a sort of sigh, they were all that easy. Quote, 